Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to analyze a common gate amplifier. So let's just first inspect the circuit and understand why this is uh, this configuration is called uh, a common gate amplifier. So as you can see, in this circuit, the input is connected to uh, the source of the transistor through a decoupling capacitor. And then the output is taken from the drain of the transistor uh, and therefore the gate is the terminal that is not connected to input nor connected to the output and therefore it's the common terminal and hence the name common gate. That said, uh, in this uh, particular circuit uh, there are actually two transistors and the second transistor uh, is connected to the drain in a certain uh, way. It basically it's a diode connected transistor where the drain and the gate are connected to each other. So instead of a, a resistor, we are actually using a second transistor as the load that is connected or as the resistor that is connected in the drain of this transistor. Now that said. Uh, considering that uh, the bias is actually established using an ideal current source, we actually don't need to do any uh, DC analysis in the circuit since we already know what the current for uh, the DC current or the bias current for the amplifier is. And therefore we can directly uh, proceed to developing this small signal model for the transistor. So since we have two transistors, a, a good approach would be to actually put the two uh, transistor models, the small signal models, uh, basically draw them first and then start connecting everything to each other using our knowledge of uh, the circuit. Um, so if you notice the lambda for both of these transistors are given as zero and therefore the circ the small signal model would not have uh, a resistance in the drain between the drain and the source and we are only dealing with um, a dependent current source so this is the model for um, the uh, N N N MOS transistor, and I'm going to use exactly the same model for the P MOS. If you recall, we actually uh, mentioned that you can either switch the the second um, the in in the P MOS, you can switch the direction of the dependent current source but then you have to use a negative GM or you just use a positive GM and keep exactly the same model and that's uh, what we're going to do. So now I'm gonna use GN and GNGD I'm sorry DN and SN and then GP and DP and SP to uh, basically identify the NMOS from the PMOS. Now we're going to start connecting the input. Uh, the, the input is connected to the source of the NMOS transistor so I'm going to put it right here and then also we know that all the DC uh, currents and voltages are going to be disconnected so all the voltages are going to turn into ground DC voltages and all the DC currents are going to be an open circuit so this is basically gone you don't have to draw any current source uh, and with that I'm going to put my input right here and directly connect that to the source and that's my input so V in it's going to be here now the gate of this transistor is actually connected to ground connect that to ground and then the drain is connected to the gate and the drain of the PMOS transistor so 
the drain and the gate are connected to each other and this is where the output is actually measured from and then finally the source of that transistor is also connected to ground now this would be GM VGS of the transistor so I'm going to call this one GM1 VGS and this one GM2 VGS these obviously these VGS terms are general and we have to redefine both of these for the circuit itself so we can actually do that right here um, so gate of this transistor is connected to ground and the source is connected to the input so VGS for this transistor it would be VGS is VG which is ground minus VS which is VI so I can replace VGS in the, the first model with uh, minus GM VI so that would be minus GM VI and then in the second one the gate and the drain are connected to each other and it's uh, labeled as V out and the source is connected to ground so that would be V out minus zero so I can replace that with V out so that would be GM V out now we're ready to analyze the circuit so this is our input, that's zero. This whole node is our output. And we don't have to do any KCL. We actually don't have to write anything, uh, any equation other than just one. Actually, we need to do one KCL for this node. There's a current here and there's a current here coming out, both coming out of that note. So I'm going to write KCL and add up these two currents and equate them to zero. So equations for components would be minus GM1 VI plus GM2 V out equal to zero and with this one equation you can simply calculate the gain for the amplifier so v out over v i uh, would be g m one over g m two now in order to calculate g m we know that the general equation for g m goes like this 2 times the square root of k n or k, basically k times i d now the current i d for this transistor is the same as the current that is passing through is, is basically this, uh, the current of this current source uh, this current passes through this transistor and then the same current actually passes through the and PMOS, the second transistor, so this, the current 1 milliamp uh, travels in the circuit like this. Let me actually do it. So this is the flow of current, DC current. So the same 1 milliamp current passes through both. Uh, and from that, and knowing what the KN and KP for the transistors are, we can calculate GM1 and GM2. So that would be this 2 times the square root of uh, 2 times 1. So that would be 2 times square root of 2. And then GM2 would be 2 times the square root of 0.5. In other words, 
2 over square root of 2. And with that in mind, I can calculate the gain of the amplifier. That's 2 times square root of 2 divided by 2 over square root of 2. And this whole thing is equal to 2. So a couple of things that we uh, can observe here is that the first of all, the gain of the amplifier is a positive number. And that's always true for any common gate uh, transistor uh, amplifier. This is different than what we use to calculate for a common uh, source amplifier, which the, which the gain ended up being a negative number. Um, the other thing is that uh, the gain obviously could be a po uh, large, uh, larger than one, so um, it could be designed to, these uh, common gate amplifiers could be designed to have a high gain. Now in terms of the input resistance and output resistance, uh, we have to look at the current that goes in and then divide that by um, the, vo the voltage divided by the current and you can calculate the input resistance and then you would do the same in the output and calculate the output resistance. Um, so in this specific case you can clearly see that the, if this is the input and the current that goes out of the current source is negative of this current would be GMVI. So if uh, I write that equation, input resistance is equal to VI divided by GM1VI. So that would be simply 1 over GM1. And this is in kilo ohm, so that would be 1 over 2 square root of 2 in kilo ohm. So this number is actually a relatively small number and uh, from this we can conclude that the input resistance of a common gate uh, configuration uh, is not necessarily large and a lot of times um, it ends up being a relatively small number which from what we have discussed this is actually not a good characteristic for a good voltage amplifier. Now to calculate the output resistance we have to uh, connect a voltage source in the output and then turn off all the other uh, independent sources of uh, energy in, in the circuit which means VI has to be turned off uh, which means this source is going to be connected to ground and therefore uh, VGS of this transistor turns out turns out to be basically zero which means that GM VGS for this transistor uh, turns off so there's no current here so basically for the calculation of the output resistance this is the only uh, resistor the transistor that ends up uh, being in a circuit and therefore simply the current that comes out ends up being gm v naught and therefore v naught divided by the current which is gm v naught ends up being simply 1 over gm 2 now, uh, this output resistance in this specific design ended up being a relatively small number, but uh, generally speaking with a common gate uh, amplifier, the output resistance is not necessarily a small number. So, in a sense, even though that the common gate could give us a large gain, assuming that uh, is designed properly, but the input resistance and output resistance of a, a common gate amplifier is not really um, appropriate for a good voltage amplifier. Um, so with that in mind, uh, a common gate normally is not used as neither the first or the input stage of an amplifier nor as the output stage of the amplifier. Uh, 
and only is used as one of the stages in the middle uh, once you put once you start putting all these different uh, stages together to design uh, a hybrid or multi-stage amplifier hopefully this has been helpful and thank you for your attention